I want to thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. Hey, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We have all kinds of new content for you that will bless you every day. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And guess what? You will enjoy this video. This is Jesse Plan said, enjoy yourself today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to our boardroom chat. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis, and we're coming here right here from Jesse Duplantis Ministries here in Destrehan, Louisiana, Hallelujah. suburb of New Orleans. Hallelujah. Not New Orleans, New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> or naturally, New Orleans, like in you Louisiana. say. In Louisiana. Yes, that's it. Praise <laughs> God. Well, people, give you a little update. Uh, we just came through a, what probably the worst hurricane we've ever seen, About but we're a doing month good. Ago. About a month ago. Well, we're ago. doing good. The Lord's really yeah. helping us. We are speeding up. We, I mean, we're We don't working. know how to stand still around here. No, we're, we're always going forward. We can't go back. No, no. we're going forward. We touch, you know, all the buildings, you know, they're being, uh, you know, some of the damage. We're getting it well, all fixed. Well, we have to wait on supplies and sure, parts and things, things like that. Replacement but we pieces. have really had divine favor, even with the supplies, the contractors, everybody. We've had a lot of, we didn't have to wait compared to other people. Man, I mean, you know, to God be the glory for it. The Lord just gave us some divine favor. Praise God. Actually, I think something else happened. What? I want to talk today about the hidden help. Oh, I like that. You know what I'm talking the hidden, about? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> the Hidden Help. I'm going to learn this, too. There was a movie a couple of three years ago called The Help, somebody, which I thought was a great movie. And I was thinking about what, the, um, what I should talk about, and I got to thinking about how many different things have happened to us that, not that we're better than anybody, because we're certainly not, and God's no respecter person, that proves it, but we've just been able to be in the right place at the right time to do the right thing, to receive the right things that we needed what, during this storm, during the storm, before the storm, after the storm, all these different things. And it dawned on me, we have some hidden help. And I want to talk about that today. We're going to talk, we're going to tell some stories okay. that I think you're going to enjoy. And uh, it's, it's a blessing. So call a friend, tell them to watch this boardroom chat because we're going to be talking about their hidden help mm. as well as our hidden help. It's going to be good. Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Paul, I believe Paul wrote the uh, book of Hebrews. I, I know it says to the Hebrews, but it's so Pauline in its understanding and, and, and its, its text. And in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 says, Let brotherly love continue. Mm -hmm. Why? Be not forgetful, <clears throat> excuse me, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels. Unawares. Unawares. The hidden help. That's good. The angels of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, powerful beings, yet they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to us. Now, I'd like you to read that in the Amplified or Passion or Message, however you, uh, whichever one you have today. Well, let's The hidden it. help, because I really believe there's no way we could have done what we've done so soon without Hidden help. Somebody helping us doing some wonderful and glorious things. Right. So would you read Hebrews step, chapter 13, verse 1? Which one is this? Here? This is Amplified. Okay, read that one. It says, let love, verse 1 says, let love for your fellow believers continue and be a fixed practice with you. Never let it fail. Do not forget or neglect or refuse to extend hospitality to strangers in the brotherhood being friendly, cordial, and gracious, sharing the comforts of your home, and doing your part generously. For through it, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Isn't that a miracle of God? Uh -huh. uh, give me another. Is the message of passion? I, 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 wanna, I really want to put this in you because we do have a lot of hidden help. Oh, now, yeah. we have one angel that never leaves us. Oh, yeah. Been with me from the day I was born. I think he's asked for reassignment sometimes because I was crazy. <laughs> Some of the stuff that he had to go through just to keep me safe. And that's that guardian angel. Each one of us have one. Yes. That's the hidden help. And uh, so read. What, well, the what, message Bible says, uh, verse 1, stay on good terms with each other, held together by love. Be ready with a meal or a bed when it's needed. Why some have extended hospitality to angels without even knowing it. Isn't that a blessing that of God? Now, I want to talk about well, that hidden help. Let me look at the passion. Okay, get that passion one out there. Glory it says, to God. no matter what, make room in your heart to love every believer and show hospitality to strangers, for they may be angels from God showing up 
as your guests. That's a blessing of Isn't the Lord. Great? And I believe I have done that many times. And I want to talk about some different experiences that I've had with angelic beings and things of that nature. Some people say, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, it doesn't make no difference. It's still true anyhow. Because, you know, no one, some, sometimes you're just not that good. How can something just happen? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen, you know, especially in accidents. I, you know, I've been down on three airplane crashes, and I know the Lord saved my life. And that angel, that Gordon angel, I mean, he was busy with me, you know. <laughs> I, maybe you've often said maybe he might have wanted re reassignment because yes. you kept him pretty busy. I kept him especially busy. Especially before you knew the One Lord. One time I flipped the car three times in over in, and they had to cut me out. Uh, they, they called it the... Jaws of life. I Jaws of life. It. Rip it apart because it was all being crushed in. You couldn't and, open and the door. A, yeah, I couldn't. And I, man, I mean, I was upside down and a hand grabbed me. During the flipping. During the flipping. Mean? And I, I noticed it because this, this, this shoulder, I mean, was completely free. And I thought, cool, what's holding me? You know? And what happened is the door actually bent and a piece of steel, it busted from the door, came and it stopped that close to my side. It would pierce me. Yeah. If I'd have moved, and I should have been thrown to the other it side. It didn't pierce you because that hand was holding yeah, you in place. But I should have like, been thrown to the other side. Because you didn't have seatbelts in those days. Oh, no, You're no. You're kind of old. It was a Carver. You know what a Carver is? It doesn't Not matter. a Carvette, a Carver. It's a little sporty kind of car. Yeah, it was a, and it had the engine in the front. Okay. Uh, no, it's, in the back. In the back, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, but it was just really, it was a pretty little car. But I should have been thrown. They were just amazed. And I hit the newspapers the next day. Uh, a, miracle, uh, a miracle, he did not die. Wow. And, it was, and that was an angel of the Lord. And the night before that, my mother had a dream that she saw me and that the blood of Jesus was coming over me like a tsunami. Mm. And there was movement in that blood or whatever. And that wow. was the angels of God, see, going before me. Of course, I didn't believe any of that stuff Did then. I was just a kid. Did she tell you that before, the night before or after the accident had happened? And she, she told me that the night before, and I thought she had lost her mind. You know, I call it the God stuff and <laughs> things of that nature, that, that, that way. But I tell you what, hidden, you have hidden help, hidden in, help. A, in every fashion and form. And the ministering spirit sent forth to minister to us and for us. Mm -hmm. So think about that. And you know, a lot of people don't realize, Kathy, that the spiritual world is so much bigger than the physical world. Right. It, oh, yeah. it, it doesn't have the limitation that we have in the physical world. And, uh, uh, but, I mean, it's amazing how the movement, yet it is a place where there's war. There was war in the spirit world. Yeah. I mean, war. And, and I mean, between Satan's angels or Satan's pe people who once was a, a great angel, a worship angel, Lucifer. who fell and then began to fight God and God kicked him out of heaven. Jesus said, I beheld him as lightning falling. Right. Great energy. So I, I want to talk about these different things, you know. How many times that God has protected you? When we all get to heaven, we go, I think it, I call it here, run back the videotape, and show you exactly how many times that angel stopped somebody from killing you wow. or stopped the accident from happening or whatever. But I, and, and he said, you've, you've entertained angels. And I thought, I like the word entertain oh, because they're very curious about us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, because we have the ability that they don't have. You see, in terms of this natural, and, and, and it's amazing how they, they say they can believe God and they're going through all this trouble and all these different things of that nature. And they see the warfare oh, because the warfare they, probably, around. they see the demonic yeah. forces, the principalities and powers of the Amen. air that are at work against God's kids. Yeah, know? and it was just such a blessing. But I, I'll never forget that time uh, somebody hit me in the face. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was mad. I was just a baby Christian, had my pampers on, you know. <laughs> And I'm talking about the Lord, and, so, and I got not slapped. Even a year. Yeah. Oh, and it made me so mad because I thought God would not allow nobody to yeah. slap me. Yeah, you know, did. especially since I was born again. I was barely saved. You know what I'm saying? I was saved, but I mean, just a few months. And I was so angry. And I used to drink a lot before I was saved. I decided I didn't had it with God and everything. And I was going down to Curly's bar and get me a drink. <laughs> like, used to talk, I got a drink. That's my oldest brother used to talk that. Mm -hmm. And you start praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, you left the house, and I didn't know anything else to do but pray, so I <laughs> hid it in tongues. And actually, the Spirit of God, when I prayed in tongues, I believe gave me wisdom and insight of what to do. I actually started you pleading the blood of Jesus. I had heard that you could do that. So figuratively, I would, would like grab the blood of Jesus and like they did in, in the book of... Uh, Genesis, Exodus. Exodus, how they put the blood on the doorpost. Yeah. I put it over every door entrance into my house, and I was just pleading the blood of Jesus and crying out to him because I was 
You don't I didn't want to go, want to back, go to back to that old lifestyle. lifestyle. I remember how beautiful, beautifully, supernaturally delivered you were. I mean, you were a, a drunk before you got <laughs> saved. I mean, God. A devil, a gangster. Uh, but God a sinner, supernaturally. A chief of sinners. I mean, you didn't battle with you supernaturally. I believe God totally delivered you from that. And I Amen. didn't want you to see you go back into it. It's such right. a beautiful deliverance. I was instantly completely. Never another drink when I got born that. again. I mean, like. It just So that stopped. was the area the enemy came to, sure. to pull you away from God. So, you know, I, I had a, I, my first two or three months were gloriously wonderful being saved. And I was just talking about it. I had the baby and, and boy, I got hit. And I was so mad. And yet I hadn't really read much of the Bible. Didn't know that they pulled Jesus' beard out and spit in his face. And I, and I just couldn't handle that because before I saved, I was going to make you an offer. Boom, boom, boom. I would have popped you in a second back in those days and, uh, and you know, on the streets of New Orleans because I, I ran with gangsters. I just did that. And you do what you got to do. That's how they said it was. And when you're kind of raised in that kind of way of thinking, it becomes normal when really it's very abnormal. So I got in my car and I went down to Curly's. And man, I, t I was so mad at God. I can't believe I stood up for you and you let somebody hit me. I said, let me tell you something. So, man, I pulled on, I popped my car, and I tried to open that door, and the door wouldn't open. That's because I was at home pleading the blood of because Jesus hidden over every help. door, and that was one of the doors that, I, that belonged to me. <laughs> yeah, you sent some hidden help I and didn't realize it. Yeah. That angel of God was holding that door. I right. mean, I hit it with my shoulder. I actually bruised my shoulder trying to open it. Bam, bam, trying to get out this dumb car, and all you had to, you know, you I, I, couldn't open. I mean, I did everything. Right. I thought about busting the glass, but I didn't want to have to replace the glass, you know. <laughs> Bam! I kept hitting. You were I thought, determined. I was determined to go in there and get drunk. They tell God and everybody else, forget but, about all that junk. But you couldn't go through and the And all blood. of a sudden, I got, I got uh, <laughs> convicted. I didn't get the feeling bad. I saw what I was doing. I said, how dumb. I right. said, if I cannot, and I remember saying this, if I cannot handle one little lick Boy, I'm about the weakest Christian I guess anybody could ever. Yeah, I remember we used to thinking call it a that. Weak, weak puppy. Yeah, yeah, just a weak, uh, no count puppy, puppy is what I call it, you know. And I said, and I, I repented right there in the car. I said, Lord, forgive me for just being a weak puppy, just this. How can I? Lord, I just, and, and I had my hand like it, and the door opened up. And I, clo I closed it and opened it. Click, click, click. Right. And I said, and that's when I came back home. And boy, when I went back to the uh, to the house, you were like, your eyes are about big as saucers. <laughs> did you did you go good? Did you go drink? And I said, no. And uh, I don't know if you remember saying this, but you did. I said I couldn't get out of that car. I tried to open up that car, and you said the angel of God was holding his hand on that door because I was praying. I plead the blood. I said you plead the what? I plead the blood. You're bloody boy. I had blood all, blood all over you. I was not gonna let you go back into that stuff. I remember you left mm. angry, and I didn't know where Ooh, you were going, I so I, I didn't know what to do but pray. And that was the most powerful thing I could have done. Instead of getting into worry or fear or running after you. I just committed it to the Lord, and it Amen. totally transformed that situation. I remember you left one way and came back another whole way. You came through the door as though nothing had happened with a bag of groceries. I don't know if I you went remember to the, that. I, I never go to groceries. <laughs> I just went, I, so I, I was to pretend, just, oh, that's what I was going to do anyway. And but. I remember thinking, <laughs> how weak. What, you, you can't handle this? You know, and because before, I mean, you could hit me. I mean, when I wasn't saved, man, I could handle anything. I, I didn't care what, mm -hmm. what happened. But I thought, man, that's just totally wrong. And that angel of the Lord, and I believe that was my garden angel. Uh, guardian. Uh, guardian, whatever you call it. Sound like you said garden. Well, it's close enough, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. I knew what you meant. Well, he brought it, he, he, he let me buy groceries, so I could yeah, go to the garden. You know? Good guy. <laughs> and uh, I could, I, it was amazing. I didn't realize just how much help I needed. Right. That's why I call them the hidden help. Mm -hmm. And how many times you've talked to some people and you felt such a wonderful witness, you didn't know who they were, and you were probably talking to an angel of God. Now, you ought to also understand something about Satan. The Bible said he comes as an angel of light. Right. Because if you saw Satan the way he really was, you would reject him immediately. You would, you would have nothing He's to do a with it. Right. So he has that facade, see? But you still have those wonderful angels that are helping you. There's different kind of classifications of angels literally in the Bible. And it's one of the most amazing studies you ought to do that will minister life to you. So that's why I call them the hidden help. That was one of those stories. I'll never forget that. And I made up my mind that day, no matter what would happen to me, right. that I would live for Jesus. Now, nobody likes being persecuted and hit and hurt and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? <laughs> I made up my mind 
that's not going to stop me from loving the Lord or from walking away from salvation. And I think I have had angels to help me during those times. Oh, definitely. Now, that was one of my stories. I got a lot. I, I've, I've, I've talked and met with a lot of different angels. And I'll never forget one time I, I was in a, uh, in, uh, <clears throat> well, central Louisiana, you could call it. And I was work, preaching almost every day. And I was, uh, I was only about maybe 35 years old, I guess, something like that. And, uh, man, I began to have chest pains. I mean, I was working myself crazy, you know, and I thought, my God, man. And uh, I always used to, uh, in those days, we didn't, we, we, you stayed in uh, pastor's homes. Yeah. Or they had something called evangelistic quarters. Yeah, Most of the time, I think it was you were homes. younger than 35. Maybe 30, I don't know, 30, yeah. 31, I, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, to make a long story short, I, would, I was actually hurt, and I was just exhausted. So uh, I was sitting, and it was tw almost 12 o'clock at night. And I never, at, at, at Benny Rapon's house, I never, uh, Pastor Benny Rapon, mm -hmm. that was in Opelousas, no, no, not Opelousas, uh, oh, it's right out of, it's right out of uh, Alexandria on the other side of the river. Anyway, to make a long story short, I, uh, I always like to put a scripture in my mind, and I was sitting up in the bed and had my back leaning up against the bed, uh, you know, the back of the bed, you know, the headboard. Mm -hmm. And, and I, so I read a scripture, and all of a sudden when I looked up, <laughs> he had to be eight foot, nine foot, was this, it, physically, I could see him like you see me. And I went, whoa. And he had long blonde hair, about the color of your hair. And he looked at me, and the dogs start going crazy. Mm. He had a bunch of them dachshund dogs. I call them wiener dogs, you know, them wiener dog looking kind of thing. But them dogs, rah, 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 and them dogs could see that angel. They were and right. you could see it. I mean, and I could see it like you see me. And I went, whoa, it didn't scare me. And he said this, I have been sent of the Lord to tell you to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the Bible, was, I went like, the Bible went like this on my chest and my head went back on that, uh, 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 on the headboard. Now this was 12 o'clock at night, I remembered it. And I slept 12 straight I woke up at 12 noon hmm. in the same exact position. Now, and I thought, my God, man, daylight. I, and I felt so good. Rested, fully rested. And so when I went, I went out there, they were kind of concerned about me because, I, you know, normally I was supposed to meet him for breakfast. I didn't, man, I just sleep it. Come walking up there, and uh, he said, Brother Jesse, I just apologize for my dog. He had two of them. Hmm. Beautiful dog. It was really nice dog. They were screaming and hollering and just barking. barking. And I thought, man, I'm going to kill them dogs. <laughs> that man's trying to sleep. And I said, you know what happened to me? And I told him that story. I said, your dogs saw that angel. And that angel looked down. And that dog come in the room. And he patted them on the head. And they just, <laughs> just doing this kind of stuff. It's amazing that animals sometimes become very sensitive to spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You know, they notice things like that. That was one of my close encounters of the God kind. And that same angel, when I went to heaven in 1988, is the one that escorted me, that same angel, escorted me. Now, I don't believe he was my guardian, guardian angel, instead <laughs> of guardian angel. Uh, I don't think so. And he escorted me into heaven where I met Abraham and all the different things. And, and I went through that wonderful uh, experience. It was, such a, it was not a vision. It was a physical trip. I don't know how I got out of there. Some of you heard me talk about the heaven thing. If you saw it a few months back, how I got out that hotel, how I got out that ceiling, I don't know. I mean, I, you know how Paul said, I don't know whether I was in my body or out of the body. That I, I experienced physically. But that angel was nice, but he was a big boy. Now, and I mean, when I say big, I mean big. That was one of my encounters with mm -hmm, him. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, I, and he entertained me. I've been sent of the Lord to tell you to sleep. You see, and, you know, after I got the thing, I said, oh, well, I could have thought of that. And as I was praying, the Lord said, why didn't you? I had to send a messenger to tell you. Right, right. No, the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh cannot handle some things. I mean, you know, you may think you can, but you can't. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and I've had so many experiences with that. One time I was preaching. Can I tell you some of these stories? In Marouge, Louisiana, not Baton Rouge, Marouge, Louisiana, <laughs> And I'll never forget this. Now, that church probably sat 150 people, beginning of my ministry. And the pastor of that church didn't believe in falling out in the spirit. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So he handed me the service. And, uh, and so, man, I started ministering. So I was, I was behind the pulpit. And I just felt said something behind me. And I turned around. And there was two angels standing, and not in the choir loft. It was, uh, they, that's where the choir, the little choir, they had maybe, I don't know, six, seven people, something like that. But they, they already he had dismissed the choir. And they looked at me and smiled. And I went, I quit preaching. Now, these people could see that. I said, I, I went, hey. I just, and they walked right past me, like, but as close as you are to me, Kathy. And, I, and, and they started to walk into the crowd. And there was a woman on the back pew. I don't know her name. She stood up and said, I see him too. Wow. And I went, you see him too? Mm-hmm. And they smiled. And when they walked off the platform, ba-bam, that's the second, that's twice that's happened in my ministry. The whole church fell out. Mm-hmm. I'm talking, crump, you're sitting in a pew, brum, on the floor. And the pastor, he was <laughs> on the first pew, boom, boom. He got hit by the spirit of God and just went out under the power. And this went right through, they walked right through those pews to those people. Now, whether you believe this or not, I mean, I'm reliving this. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. I could physically see this out the church. Now, it lasted about maybe. But you didn't fall out. No, I didn't. I was just, huh. It affected them. The only people that were standing up was me and that woman. Woman in the back, me in the front. I said, did you see that? She said, yes, I did. Did you see him go? I said, I did. People knocked out in the Holy Ghost. A good 12 minutes, I guess, 10 or 12 yeah, minutes. Right. And all of a sudden, the, uh, people begin to go, get up a little bit and things of that nature. So I began to explain that. And thank God I had a witness because you sound like some crazy idiot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they, that was, and they were smiling. You and know, I thought, I why believe- were they smiling? Uh-huh. And the Lord said, they enjoyed your message. Oh, wow. That kind of blessed me. So in, in essence, I was kind of entertaining them. With the word of God. Mm. I'll never forget that as long as I ever live. Well, you know how often the angels or, or would be in our services. We may feel it and sense it in a different mm-hmm. way, but we haven't seen it physically. Oh, I love man. that. I mean, it was just the most powerful thing. But as I, as I go, sometimes when I'm flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, it gets so heavy on me, I can physically see them moving in the crowds. Mm. I mean, physically. And I hear God's voice physically now. I ain't a big shot. And sometimes he speaks in my spirit, but a lot of times you'll see me when I'm moving, you'll see me do this because he's talking to me. I go, what? You know, I can physically hear it in my ear. It was one of the most amazing things. And, I, and then that same thing happened over there in, uh, uh, in, uh, when, w- when I w- went to heaven yeah. um, and came back, 1988. Yeah, and you gave that, the testimony. Not the testimony, but you, the church service I walked, you went to that Yeah, night I walked up you, to the, put the, the pastor gave me, Paul, Pastor Paul Troker right. gave me the pulpit at Five minutes after seven. I thought, okay, you know. Mm-hmm. And I walked up, and I had just come back from that great trip that I had to heaven. And I said, I have been in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. And the whole place got knocked out. Bam. Angels all over. Boom. It mm-hmm. was 800 people there. Right. Hit the ground. And now they lasted about 30 minutes. So I didn't have nobody to talk to. So I sat down on the platform <laughs> waiting for people to get up. That's a true story, so help me God. And I thought, why did they fall down? Well, these angels are so powerful, and, and they carry the Spirit of God with them on them. Right. And, I mean, it was one of the most amazing things in my right. life. I've had many, many experiences with that and how God, why you? I don't know. I'm no better than anybody else, you know. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, think about them angels that knocked down, uh, uh, that opened up the prison for Peter in there. That's right. That's right. You know, Peter had a harder time getting in the church than he did getting out of jail. <laughs> because it's, if Peter's at the door, he ain't at the door. He's in jail. That's what they feel. Yeah. And the angels literally knocked off the doors off the hinges. Yeah. Just popped them. One angel in the Bible knocked down 185,000 oh, men. True, right. That's some powerful boys. Have you ever had an angelic experience? I have, but I haven't seen them physically with my eyes. But I've known the presence of God was there and it. You know, it mm-hmm. just... It's just so wonderful. I love it when that happens. Yeah. But it, it's just, I, I just always, you know, people hear the things about 
people falling down and all that. And a lot of people don't understand those terms. And we call it slain in the spirit. Yeah. That's and kind of a strange, you shouldn't be called slain. Slain in the spirit. Got, you fall down before kill the Lord. Lord. But, you know, it's so biblical. You see it so often throughout the, all of the scripture. And sometimes when, actually when Moses encountered God in that burning bush, the angel was there. The Bible talks about that was an angel in that oh, manifestation yeah. of an angel. And he you know had to remove was? the shoes you off of You know what his, his name was? What was it? Metatron. Metatron. Oh, I know, I know that to be a fact. I've had the Lord speak that to me. I said, I, I need to know these guys. <laughs> I mean, I need to know this stuff. You see, I want conversation. I need, God, I mean, I just need to know. And Moses was worse than me. He said, I have got to see your face. And he, he wanted he, to see his glory. He yeah, said. he said, yeah. I, I want to see your face. And, and he said, you can't see my face and live. And he was willing to die. I'll give it a shot. I don't care. You <laughs> see what I'm saying? Because God is so phenomenal. Right, and that overwhelming presence of God, though, is what I was thinking. We call, you know, sometimes when you get into God's presence, you can't stand up. Your physical body is gets weakened. Oh, by. yeah, you're going to bite think, the dust. Think about even when the people, when the soldiers came to arrest Jesus, and he was <laughs> in the garden, and he had been praying all night. And they, he said, who do you seek? And he says, they said, Jesus, he says, I am he. And they all fell Bam. backwards, the word says. And the second time they did it as well. Right. And they fell backwards. A manifestation of the overwhelming presence of God right there in that place. Well, those angels ministered A physical unto him. place on the earth. Yeah, yes, physically. They had, angels had been there ministering to him. Yeah, giving they ministered. Him and listen, people say, well, that was Bible night. days. Hmm. Okay, let me help you. Uh, Hebrews 13, chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, Bible days, today, right. where you are, yeah. and forever. And forever. And tomorrow and whatever you can think of. <laughs> uh-uh. You know, let me tell you about Bible days. Bible days is every day. Right. See, the hidden help is here. Well, technically, I've heard it Say the name of Jesus. The... Jesus. There's an angel standing behind you. Right there. Right. Every time you say the name of Jesus, they are where? Well, they're already here. Oh, yes. Oh, Lord, I get the goosebump when I think about that. And when you understand, you're not alone. You never will be alone. And I meant on those airplane crashes, they were with me mm -hmm. and helped me. And I, 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 I you know, when you, especially when you're what I call become a spiritual person, not that you're better, you just begin to really, Lord, I, I, I want to know you more. I, I, I want to get close. Man, you begin to realize the activity that's going on around you, including demons, All right. including other things as well. You see what I'm saying? Right. And the Bible said God, angels went to Jesus all the time and ministered unto him. Yeah. In fact, Hebrews, I was looking for that verse of Scripture. I want to be able to read it for okay. them. It's in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, and this okay. is the Amplified as well. Okay, read it's it. very familiar. You, you just part of referred to it earlier. It says, Are not the angels all ministering spirits? servants sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit salvation. Isn't that something? So God wants us to know that the angels are for our benefit. They serve us. We are sons of God, well, yeah. but we serve. But angels are servants unto mankind. And on Labor Day weekend 1974, when you told me uh, Billy Graham's on television, you see, you wasn't by yourself. There was an angel there moving on me because I didn't want to see that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay. Right. But he was helping you to help me to inherit salvation. That's right. Right there. That's right. So, and I got born again that night For, of in, the assistance. In, in, in a bathroom in Boston, Massachusetts. Let me see how it says, reads the that. The hidden help. The, I love that. The, the hidden help. Hidden help. I'm going to see how it says it in the Passion Translation. Okay. For that role. What role then, verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 1, what role then do the angels have? The angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve those who are going to be saved. Isn't so that's that really what you just said. That's exactly going the to be truth. Saved. You were going to be saved. Because yeah, I'd be but praying. I didn't know it at the time. In fact, I remember spending lots of time on my knees praying for you. And I would, I would call in the angels. In fact, I would say these words. I said, Lord, I pray for laborers of the harvest to go forth. <clears throat> in fact, I found that in the scripture. And, and to bring you to the knowledge of Jesus. I want that man. I want somebody to go in your path. So I, my, that somebody was angels that you may have entertained unaware. Maybe it was just a voice speaking to you that you didn't recognize, a prompting yes, right. that you didn't hey, recognize. I feel that right now in the spirit. Some of you are standing there and there's angels in your house and you, you go, whoa. Hey, you have, and sometimes you're here and walking. They will take care of you. I mean, it's amazing. <clears throat> they, they sent the minister for us, through us, and they move in, in all kinds of ways to help us. Now, that's not just your guardian angel. I'm not talking about there's a bunch of them on assignment, see? Mm -hmm. 
uh, God's messengers. And what a blessing of the, the Lord protection. that is. And the protection. You know, we all know about uh, Psalms 91, our, our, that verse, that passage of, well, the whole thing is wonderful about the protection of God. But the Bible tells us that he will give his angels charge over you yeah. to keep you in all your ways. Yeah. You know. Well, even Satan said that in Luke 4. Right. Don't want you to catch yourself off because the angels will not let you dash your foot against a stone. Right. That's Luke chapter 4. They were there. They were there watching to help Jesus in the, any event, any time, any place, anywhere. Right. And watch when Jesus is coming back. They're coming back with him. A whole host of Watch this. They get so excited, they started singing at Jesus' birth. <laughs> the angels proclaimed his birth a and massive singing. massive choir right Ooh, there on the hillside just them, for those them, shepherds. Them angels can sing, but <laughs> let me yeah. tell you what. What a blessing of the Lord. You know who taught them? And I'm sure they were moving, too. You know who they taught them to sing? Lucifer. Lucifer. He was the he praise, was the praise angel. angel. How could he fall so bad? Think about How? that. Think but about he did. That. See, and, and, and that, that infectious sin is what did it, see? But when you understand that today you're not by yourself, mm -hmm. you have some hidden you help. Have help. Not only do me and Kathy pray for you, we pray for God to minister to you when I'm praying for people, but there are angels there. To, to, at the bidden call of God, at your bidden call, bam, are there to do wonderful things because he's the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. And let's just face it, sometimes <laughs> we, we, we don't know what to do. We're at the point of no return. This is it, man. This is as far as I can go. I can't go no more. And yet God Almighty will send someone to help you. I, I want to tell you another story. Yeah. I left Crossett, Arkansas. I got some angel stories, man. I love Crossett, this. Arkansas. Now, I had to get to Monroe, Louisiana. This is when the, uh, the uh, airline was called Republic Airlines. And they flew from Monroe to New Orleans. So I, I left the church at Crossett, Arkansas. I was preaching. I think it was the Assembly of God Church. And the pastor said, Brother Jesse, it is snowing so bad. And it's cold. Be very, you know how to drive in this kind of weather? You know, we're from South Louisiana. You, you really know? didn't. I mean, we, we slip on a raindrop. <laughs> you know, much less snow. We don't know about that. Hydroplane. <laughs> yeah, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I said, well, I'm going to try to make it. So I took off. And I'm going to tell you something. It was like almost like a whiteout. And it was cold. I remember I had the heater on in that rental car at full blast, and I was still kind of cold. Mm -hmm. So, man, I'm going on, and he told me, he said, be careful, and I never knew what this was, be very careful of black ice. Mm -hmm. I know what that means, because it's very slick. You didn't slick. even know what to look for. I had no idea. I didn't know that. Nobody answered. So I'm going, and I must have got out maybe, I don't know, 45 miles out of, and I mean, I was driving pretty <clears throat> slow, and I got on this long stretch, looked like about two miles, I mean, nothing but woods. And I hit some black ice, and the car went sideways. And when it went sideways, it speeded up. And then it turned and headed straight down this huge embankment. And I said, oh, Lord. And I mean, I, could, and I couldn't do I mean, I had no control. I mean, you know, this is it. And I hit this tree. But what happened is this tree had so much snow on it, the branches had been, So I hit the branches for now, and it, it broke your... And it, it broke it, the, the, the impact. Yeah. And I wasn't doing, wasn't going very fast, maybe 30, 30, about 35 miles an hour. But when you slide, you speed up, see. Well, it broke the branches. There was so much snow, it didn't actually, it didn't, it didn't hurt the car. Now, I'm stuck. I am down. And I thought, God, God, what am I going to do? And it's cold. And then the engine, I thought, man, what well, I'm going to... I'm gonna let this engine keep running. I'm gonna, you know, start this engine. It stopped the engine, and I said, "But man, I don't want to get carbon monoxide." And, all that. and I'm sitting there, and there, buddy, and coal is setting in. I must have sat there for about five minutes. So I got out the car, climbed myself up the embankment. Nothing. I looked down this way. I looked the other way. Black as an ace of spades. Just black. All of a sudden, I saw a light. And I thought, a light. And it kept coming toward me. And then the light, it was one light, turned into two lights. Then I realized, that's a vehicle. Now, listen, there's no curves. There's no, not, this is just straight. And this old guy had a pickup truck. He stops. And he's kind of elderly gentleman. Look like me now. <laughs> he said, hey, young man, look like you need some help. I said, yes, sir. He said, it's cold out here, isn't it? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, I got a chain in the back of this truck. I said, I think I can get you out of there. I said, well, I certainly thank you. He said, would you do me a favor? Get in the car. 
And he said, when I pull on it, he said, make sure your wheels are straight. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you know, I right. said, okay. So I straightened it out, you know, and because uh, the snow and the mud, uh, he pulls me out. Mm -hmm. pulls like that. Man, I thought, God, thank you, Jesus. I looked at it, he said, well, the car's not damaged or you're not damaged. Mm -hmm. You think you're going to be all right? I said, yes, sir. I said, thank you. Now, I'm talking to him like I'm, I'm talking to you. I said, man, I said, I'm trying to get to Monroe, Louisiana. I got to catch a flight. In the this was 2.30 in the morning now, okay? Because I had a long service. I'd flown in the Holy Ghost, but, you know, and anyway, he said, now, I'm going to give you some, some good wisdom. He said, make sure your two wheels in the car stay on the snow side. In other words, Drive two wheels on the shoulder where the snow is. He said, that'll give you traction. He said, remember, if you go to turn a curve like this and there's ice, you're just going to slide down the curve and you're going to start spinning again. I said, he said, do what I say, okay, and it'll help you. I said, all right, thank you, sir. He said, you, I said, I'm from South Louisiana. I said, you know, we, we, don't, we, we don't have this kind of weather down there, not like this anyway. Right. He said, well, you have a good, you have a good day and uh, uh, nice meeting you. I said, I said, is there any, can I pay you enough? Oh, no, this is what I do. Hmm. And now, at that time, that didn't make no sense to me. I know what that meant then. Yeah, he's ministering the Spirit. Sent to me. Right. Watch this. So I get in my car, and I thought, you know, I put it in drive, and I started to take off, and I said, wait a minute, man. I'm going to give that guy something. I got to give him something. Now, this is maybe 20 seconds. 30 seconds at the most. Put the thing in park. I'll open up the way. He was gone. There's no way. It's a good two-mile stretch, straight as an arrow. No way I would have seen his lights. No, no way he got away. No. And I went, good God. And I remembered this scripture. I just entertained an angel unaware. And I drove. I did exactly what he said. I remember I started to get up. I said, the angels had to keep the two tires on the snow. <laughs> and, I did. and I made it to Monroe, and I flew home. And yeah. I, I caught the Republic Airlines flight. That was one of my, where I entertained him. Mm -hmm. But he it helped me. He said, he helped you. that's what I do. Mm -hmm. What is an angel going to do for you today? Ministered to you. Ooh, the hidden help. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you one way I made a mistake. Why are you, Brit Jesse? I don't know. I was very, very busy. I had to fly out that afternoon, and I had to go downtown New Orleans. I've never forgotten this. It hurts me when I think about it. I don't say it was a sin, but it hurt me. I should have been more aware. I'm a preacher of the gospel. This happened maybe 12 years ago, 15 years ago. Maybe not 15. a lot longer than that. I think, no, it's 12 or 15 years ago. Anyway, so I, I, so I parked. At Mr. B's, uh, the uh, uh, place where you go into Mr. B's. All right, I parked there and I was gonna go. I was going to look at a, a, something, a, a piece of antique furniture. Something I had to do. They asked me to come look at something. So I started walking, and this man came up to me, all disheveled. I mean, look, I never seen someone with no hope. I looked at him in his eyes like that. No hope. Long, straggly hair. Uh, like like a, a, a very dirty, homeless person. Mm. But no hope. And he, fa he said, could you help me? I'm hungry. Could you help me? And I was being, I said, sir. I said, I, can't. I said listen, I, I'll help you. But I, yeah, just give me a minute here. I got to run over to this thing. Now, this is at the corner of Royal Street. And what is that? Iberville or Bienville? One of them? Okay, oh. Royal Street's this way, the corner. I was very close to the corner, no more than maybe 20 feet at the most, okay? Where you turn to go on Royal Street. And you can go into the, open, uh, the, the front entrance of Mr. B's uh, restaurant. Monteleon Hotel's across the street. And I said, listen, I'll be back in a minute. I said, listen, I just got to do this. And I saw the sadness in his eyes. So I said, I'll be back. I went, I was in a hurry, and I turned left to go to, go to uh, the French antique store is where I was going. And it's right there, you know what I'm saying? You pass Mr. B's and then you got the French antique store. 
and I was maybe 10 feet past the cone. I said, all I had to do was give the guy some money. I said, help me. I, I was, I was like, man. I stopped. I turned around. There's no way this man could have got away. Impossible. Five seconds, seven seconds. And when I turned to go back, on, uh, it's either Iberville or Bienville, he was gone. And the Lord went. I said, oh, God, that was an angel. That was an angel trying to teach me something. But I was too busy. It bothers me even till today. I should have. Did he need help? I, no, I don't think he needed help. But you see, I had grown to the fullness of the stature of Christ. I'm growing in enough. I should have recognized that. I should have known that was an angel. That And it was, I, I, I did not pass the test, for lack of a better way to say it. And I, right there on the, um, on, on, on the street, I bowed my head. God, forgive me. He said, I already did. Thank you. Recognize things. Never be in a hurry. Too much of a hurry not to help someone. And I've never forgotten that long as ever. It touches me when I think about that. And I wonder what would I have done or what that angel would have done if I'd have said, well, you know, here's $20. Go get you something to eat. I believe he'd have lit up like a light. I never saw such hopelessness. But you see, it taught me something. That I said, I will never do that again as long as I ever live. God, forgive me. And uh, to me, that's one of the most greatest angel experiences I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. Was that even though others helped me smiling, great, glory to God, all kinds of great things. But, boy, I missed it because I was just too much in a hurry not to help. And I had made up my mind. I had, I'm going to help, but let me just run over there for a minute and I'll, and I'll be back. You see what I'm saying? Because I told them not to park my car. Don't take it up. <laughs> Leave it right there. And, yeah. and they said, okay. They knew who I was. They called me Mr. DePlanis. Yeah, I said, I'll be back. It won't be taking long. And uh, I miss God on that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be honest. I'm, I have to be honest. I miss the Lord on that. So now I am very, very sensitive of the people that are around me. And the dip, Because you know what? I'm looking for that angel. And I'll never forget that as long as I ever live. I don't remember. remember I, be, I think I came home and told you. I about think it. I was with you. No, I, I don't remember. remember you being with me. You might have been. I, I think you, I was. You, you might have stayed in the car or something. I don't know. I mean, I was just so shocked at that, that I did not take time. Maybe you've had an experience like that. But he was gone. There's no way he could have stepped into an alley because there is no alley. No way he could have crossed the street. I'd have seen him. No way. There's no way. Like that guy on that road, there's no way the truck could disappear. The man could disappear. There was no way. It's impossible. Yeah. But it literally happened. You know, I think it's wonderful to know that God has uh, strategically positioned ministering spirits to help us at, throughout our day. And we need to be spiritually aware of these things. But at the same time, peop some people have gotten off track and they've spent too much time uh, uh, paying attention to the angels and giving them too much honor. In fact, they would be the first ones to say, do not bow down to me. Right. We worship the Father only and not right. angels. We don't seek after angels. We just realize and have to be aware that they are in our midst even now. Amen. In fact, I believe the, the, the early church really understood this. They, 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 they had the, the uh, experience where they saw the angels. I remember there was an instance where they were praying for Peter. Was it Peter to get out of jail? Yeah. And uh, so he, the angel came and loosed the bonds from him, and he was able to get out. Knocked the doors off the hinges. the doors. He was able to get out and walk through town and went to the place where they were making, had a prayer meeting for him and the girl to get out of jail. And the girl at the door was named Rhoda. And, and so the he's knocking on the door. Rhoda answers the door. No. That, that, she went to say, Peter's at the door. And they, they told her, no, that's his angel. So they had to No, have they had, said, oh, he's in jail. Not, no, the, but they also said to her, they thought, she yeah. must, that must be his angel you're thinking about. He, he, he but couldn't even get then, the church. But he let the angel in the house? I mean, sometimes we don't think rationally. They were praying for Peter to get out of jail. So they were actually praying in doubt and unbelief. They didn't <laughs> believe it was going to happen. But it just illustrates the fact that that... 
when she said it must be his angel, they were, they, were, they were spiritually aware of that. We need to be spiritually aware, recognizing no matter what we encounter, that God can send forth angels, ministering spirits. In fact, they're called messengers. And God sends these voices, these things into our lives to help us when we seek him and put him first. That's why Paul said, uh, let brotherly love continue. Mm -hmm. w w w angels react to love. They really do, because God is love. That's what yeah. he is, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, if you read even, there's so much of things about angels throughout the whole Bible. We're not doing an exhaustive study of that. We're just sure. talking no, about no these way. experiences that you've had. But even in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about how there was an angel over each of the churches, which was an angel that God assigned to certain churches in the that's that right. was existing at yeah. that time. And that's even happening today. God's spirits are with us as we come together. He says he's in our midst. And not only is he in our midst, he brings his angels with him. Amen. I mean, it's just such a blessing of the Lord. And uh, that, that the hidden help is here. Yeah. Then you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. We're never alone. Never. And never will be. And then you use the power of attorney of the name of but Jesus. But the enemy surrounds us to make us feel like yeah. we're alone. That's why we cannot go by how we feel. We must go by what we believe. And we believe what God's word says. So even when things are difficult they, and you feel well. stretched to the max, <laughs> realize that God wants to send ministering spirits to you to help you right where you are today. I have to tell you one more. This just happened during Hurricane Ida. Kathy thought I'd lost my ever-loving mind. I got so angry at that devil trying to destroy. We had 168-mile-an-hour gust, 140-mile-an-hour sustain, and wind. we were in the house. And I mean, whoo, it literally sounded like this. I mean, that wind was blowing. And I said, I've had enough of this. I'm going outside. And you said, well, I said, I'm going to meet that prince of darkness. And Kathy said, oh, can you do that inside? Can you pray this prayer inside? And I, I opened up and I made sure, man, I got into the way my house is built. It's kind of like this is the front. It, it, it's, it's front and it he goes this way. He keeps me on my knees. I guess you can see that. <laughs> in that corner. And when I then I, I was praying in tongues inside. And it was an angel. It was an angel of the Lord. Well, I said, when I walked out that, I said, I met the prince. And he said, I will destroy you. And I was talking out loud. You will not destroy nothing. I bind you in Jesus' name. You want to dance with me? You want to go to war? I was mad. I was angry, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Boy, and he was just raging, but it was black. I mean, cover your eyes the guy. Just told black. I just couldn't see. All of a sudden, I saw light behind him. And I said, this, oh, guess who's coming? <laughs> and all of a sudden, his darkness that was so dark begin to fade. I said, guess who's coming? Ooh, I'm about, <laughs> excuse me, ready to sneeze here. Guess who's coming? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get excited about it. And watch this. The darkness faded away and the light was there. That angel of the Lord was there to protect always, me. Always, always. Now, if I'd have walked 20, not 20 feet, probably 10 foot, I, I would have been killed because trees... Uh, bricks, uh, uh, shingles, flying, boy, right. I mean, just I going think crazy. the spirit world waiting for us to say something. So often that the angels that God sends to us, they're like with their hands folded. You've even explained this one time. Mm -hmm. Waiting for us to speak and say what God wants us yeah. to say. And when we what put God's we word into practice, those angels will go to work for oh, us. So we don't second. have to call on them. We call on the Lord. We seek him, oh, and then yeah. hence he sends ministering spirits to help us. Well, they own missions, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they, they own job. They, they, that's what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. and, they send, and, and they're innumerable. Mm -hmm. So you got a lot of them. So let me just say this before we close. I want to talk about this. It was, uh, you cannot exhaust this subject. Mm -hmm. But the hidden help is always around you. Realize that. The Holy Spirit is in you. Mm -hmm. The name of Jesus is in you. The Father's watching over you. So you got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, the angels. Yeah. Good Lord. And that's you why he protected. starts off with let brotherly love continue, which yeah. is when you're walking in the love See, of Catholic, God, it opens up all of the resources of heaven for you. What? I did not walk in brotherly love when I went to, to Raw Street down there. That still bothers me. Well, you know, and when you know, God, you, get busy, you know what you, the Lord just spoke to me. You got to get over that. Let That's it go. It. I know, but I thought, God, I was just so stupid. I mean, because of my mind was on something so physical that my spirit, and my spirit is far greater than my physical mind, just irritated me. And uh, I think I'd have seen one of the most glorious scenes of my life if I'd have said, here, let me be a blessing to you right now. Can I, you know, that kind of thing. It's it, it just one of, I'll never forget it as long as I ever live. So remember this today. 
that wherever you go, there's somebody in front of you, mm -hmm. there's somebody behind you, that's the hidden help, and you got the power source in you. In you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I hope you enjoyed it today. I hope it ministered to you. Oh, we didn't read a testimony. Oh, well, let's read a My testimony. Goodness, we, we got can't a couple stop of minutes. Without we can do that. that. Y'all written in some so many places. Okay. Boardroom chat. This one says Lewis says good evening from South Africa. South Africa. Abraham says watching from Chennai, India. Oh. I love this. And where they're writing from all over Ireland, South Korea, uh, South Africa again, Korea, Croatia, Canada, Zimbabwe. And I want to read this one. Kelly says I have thoroughly enjoyed and been so blessed watching JDM over the past year. I've been a part of the ministry for years, but this past year, as we moved during the pandemic, we found ourselves seeking Sunday services via online. <laughs> Thanks to you and KCM's Victory Channel, we have grown in so many ways. Here's one of my many testimonies over the past year. I just accepted a job that allows me to me part-time work, but I will be making more than I would have made accepting any full-time offers. Praise God. It is the perfect solution for our family at this time. A God solution. Thank you both for keeping it real. Jesus is Lord. I Isn't bet your angels helped to get that job. Oh, you know it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I hope our ministry is a blessing to you. And I want to thank my partners, you know, because, you know, they never leave me or forsake me neither. Mm -hmm. They've been with me all these years. I was talking about that the other night. I was in Big Spring, Texas, mm -hmm. and I was talking about my first partner, still partners with us, 45 years ago, became a partner in me. Mm -hmm. Just ministered greatly. Never has missed. Uh, that's amazing to me. And uh, so I want to thank all of you for helping us, well, building this set, building all the other sets. I think the curtains are coming back soon, Yeah, all too. the curtains are coming I back clean, it. praise <laughs> God, hallelujah. And I thank you for giving to this ministry. 100% of what you do. It goes in the world of evangelism, lock, stock, and barrel. Me and Kathy have been debt-free since 1982. And we don't ask you to do something we don't do. We're givers to this ministry greatly ourselves. If you'd like to be a part, be a partner. You know, you can go to jdm.org. And if you want to donate, you can. If you don't, please don't, don't do it. If you don't want to, don't. Just keep watching. That's all right. You don't have to. You know, if you want to use PayPal, we just do all these things to help you. Uh, use PayPal, or you can use a te you can text to give, or you can just send an old-fashioned check in the mail. Either way, however you want to do it, 100% goes in the world evangelism. We've asked the Lord for every dollar given to our ministry. Give us a soul into the kingdom of God. And I'm a, I am amazed. Uh, I, I was talking to one of my directors, George. He he, he calls himself Jorge, but he, 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 his name his name is George. <laughs> That's the way I look at George. And, uh, Spelled with a J. Yes, it's, it's Jorge. Yeah, George. And uh, <laughs> and just the comments and views and all our platforms. It's from January 2020 to the end of September of 2021. 27 million. Million. I mean, these are, this is, I'm not lying. I mean, we have the physical evidence. Over 27 million, what, 150,000 or 200,000 people. Well, that's contacted. views, but sometimes on those views, it's a whole household oh, watching. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's probably more than that. And we in don't other know, nations, you know? it could be a whole congregation. And uh, so I just them. thank people for helping us. And, and you know what? I, I don't doubt that angels may help you to do that too. Mm -hmm. So you need a good job. Say, Lord, send the hidden help to give me favor. Right. And watch God do a great miracle. Yes. Remember this. Let brotherly love continue. That's right. Oh, I got to read it. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Till next time, Jesse and Kathy say it. We'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.